hey guys, my name is Todd. I have a new life in Christ and I am recovering from an orphan spirit, fear and pride. I actually have my fear is a liar t-shirt on. It's one of my favorites. Um, but I want to I want to visit with you just a little bit and I've got some news to share with you. I think some exciting news at the end of this. But I have been leading uh, one of our groundwork groups through this pandemic and through our time of social distancing. And it's really been helpful for me to get back into some of the groundwork work, into the groundwork book, and, and to start walking through some of that again. But today I want to look at uh, week five, day five. And, and the idea of this lesson is a plan for recovery. And, and so this is such a big idea for, for so many reasons. But one, I just wonder how important is a plan, right? I used to be this guy that, that thought, ah, I want to be real organic and just let things happen, right? And, and sometimes that was just really a lame excuse to kind of cover up the fact that I didn't have a plan, I didn't have a clue, I really didn't know where I was going. Right? A plan helps me begin to have direction, it gives me a destination, and it gives me some definers for how that is going to happen. So. If you are going to do recovery work without a plan, it would be like just kind of throwing darts at a wall at an imaginary target, right? It's like, well, where do I throw this thing? So recovery is about, so recovery is not a meeting, but there is a recovery plan in regeneration. So it's not a meeting, but it really is, recovery is about making a complete change of direction, right? Uh, many of us come to recovery and man, we do not like the direction our life is going. We've maybe made several what we felt like were valid attempts to change the direction with no success. And so regeneration gives us a plan to begin to change the direction. So we really are, we're inviting you to turn away from an old way of life and then to turn towards, right, a new way of life really a, a new hope uh, and, a, and a new direction. And part of this recovery work is starting to live more honest with ourselves, more honest with God, and, and, and just engaging in more honest relationships, and also really making a move towards healthy living. And so this regeneration process it really begins to teach us there's a plan for a healthier lifestyle. And so I really want you, so when I say recovery, it is really beginning to change. It's a lifestyle change. Anybody that's done good recovery work would tell you it doesn't stop. The recovery work and the time you are in regeneration, the idea is it begins to give you the tools and the processes. It, it puts a plan in place to help you be successful at living out this recovery. And so right, the, the verse that's used for this is plans are established by counsel by wise guidance, wage war, right? So again, the idea from Proverbs would be, and maybe we don't resonate with this as much today, 
But like, right, part of the idea is, well, you never go into a battle without a battle plan. And many people would tell you that the recovery process, there are a lot of days it feels like a battle. And so we're, right, this lesson, what our leaders would tell you is part of the beauty of regeneration is it really begins to give us a plan. We say this all the time. The 12 steps, there's nothing magical about them, uh, but they give us a process. They give us these steps to begin to walk out. And right, think about it, when, when our life feels unmanageable, right, it, it, it feels chaotic, it feels out of control, right, that was part of my struggle. I kept trying to manage this anger that I felt, and, and when, when, it would, when it would happen, and even in a moment, I'm thinking kind of that, okay, don't, as I'm kind of watching myself step right into that thing, I'm saying, don't do that, um, right? It, it, so, so this process, it begins to give our life some order. It, it begins to, to help us put some, some boundaries, right? Some of you've been, uh, well, maybe some of you still need bumpers in the bowling alley, right? Or you've taken your kids bowling and, and you put those bumpers up and they can't roll gutter balls, right? It, it's, they can bounce off the sides, but they're still going to most of the time hit a pin or two, right? So part of the plan, it starts to create some bumpers and some boundaries and we start trying to live inside of that. But it's giving us an end, well, not an end game, but it's moving us to a goal of, right, living this life of recovery. It's a healthier way to live. It's a much more enjoyable way to live. And, and so... Um, you know, there's a couple of things that are part of that plan that are really important, right? That's the part about you got to show up. You got to commit to coming every week. It's really important that you do the daily work. Um, it's important, right? All of these pieces are part of the plan. The big group time Right? It's nice to hear some other people's stories. It's nice to get a little different perspective. The small group time is really, it pulls us out of that isolation and feeling alone and feeling like, right? So much of recovery work is, it, what keeps us out of recovery work is this idea that, well, no one would understand. Like nobody deals with what I deal with. And that's just not true. Your story is unique. Your struggle is not as unique as you think it is. And in small group time, we begin to see that with more clarity. We listen to other people and we go, oh, like I can relate to that. Oh, maybe, maybe that guy, that girl, maybe they would understand I think they kind of get what I'm trying to say, right? So th these are all pieces of, but for many of us, part of that plan and committing to that plan is we've got to move a different direction, right? One of the lessons is changing our playground and our playmates. For many of us, we've really got to commit to to moving in some different circles, right? A, a year of recovery work, showing up every week to do the work and trying to learn how to live 
and, and have a voice in the context of community, right? Part of that process is about changing our social community. And again, right, we're back to some healthier relationships. And some of it, right, some people, you see this, right, they make some friendships that go way beyond that year of gener regeneration. But for some of us, we do need to find some new friends. We need to find some people that will speak honestly to us. Some people that won't enable or just even encourage our different kinds of addictions. So, I want to encourage you to really see recovery as a change of direction. It's committing to a plan and trusting the plan. And you don't have to completely understand the plan, right? Again, part of the big group time, part of the small group time, what's so valuable, valuable about our leaders coming back into uh, leadership is in that the hope is, okay, they followed the plan and it made a difference. They followed this plan, the same plan, and God showed up and has done a work in their lives. So you don't have to understand the plan from beginning to end. You just have to commit to following the plan and learning to live in recovery, right? In the spiritual, we're talking about the redemptive work of God, how he takes our mistakes, our sin, our screw-ups, and he's able to redeem that and bring something good out of it to rewrite our stories, to give us a better story to live. You can find that in recovery work if you follow the plan. All right, so I said I had some news. Uh, man, this is exciting couple little caveats to it, right? So June 22nd, June 22nd, if you're watching this on Sunday or Monday, that would be the next Monday, we are going to have a live regeneration. So at 630 at the East Campus, Frisco Cam East Campus, where we've always met, uh, we are going to have Regeneration Live. And I, I'm excited about that. Uh, man, it's just going to be so good to, to see. Uh, I can't wait to see some of the men that I've been doing groundwork with um, and see some of the leaders that I haven't seen in months. And uh, it's just going to be good to be back together in the same space. Uh, we're going to continue to try to be cautious, right, and be smart. Uh, I'm sure our numbers are not going to be as many, but even, right, we're in the big auditorium. There's plenty of space if you need to spread out and have some social distancing. We will set our small groups up where, you know, you're not going to be sitting right up against each other, but you'll have a little space created we're going to be wise. We're going to ask you if you are not feeling well, if you feel like you have any symptoms that would be concerning, uh, stay home, right? I mean, be respectful of yourself and other people. I know during this process, if I'm at the grocery store and I have to cough, I'm like, you know, I'm trying everything not to cough because, you know, coughing today, it's like, ah, you know, you got it, you got it, you know. And so we're not going to be weird about that, but we are going to ask, right, if, if, you, if you're not feeling well, don't, don't come. Um, but be respectful of each other, be respectful of space. Um, and um, now if you are someone that says, you know, I'm not ready to do that, um, the, the step groups that are meeting, right, they're going to have the option to continue online 
video or bring that back in-house. So I'm going to let the groups and the leaders determine that. We are going to continue to offer a groundwork group for men and women that will meet online. So uh, if you're someone that genuinely, right, you may have some underlying health things or you're just not comfortable doing that yet, that's okay. Um, we're still going to try to meet people where they're at and, and still provide the regeneration experience and opportunity. Uh, so uh, this week in groundwork, your leaders will kind of check with you and see, you know, if, if, and if you say, oh, I'm not ready to come back, let them know, let me know, and we will, uh, you know, we'll continue to create a list and, and uh, have somebody available to do online for groundwork. Uh, so, and one big thing, okay, this is important, really important. For now, for the near future, we will not be offering childcare, okay? <laughs> and I know some of you just went, oh. Um, and that really is something today that's just outside of my, I can't do anything about that. Uh, just because of all the dynamics with this, um, we, we're not able to provide that today. Uh, that we know the importance of child care. So the hope is, you know, at some point in the near future, that will we'll, we'll bring that back in. Uh, so, uh, but be real aware of that. I would hate for you to show up with your kiddos and be ready to check them in. It's like, nobody's there. So we will not be providing child care for the immediate future. But again, as soon as we can get that back uh, in the loop, we will. And so we're going to try this for two or three weeks at least, and, and we're going to see how it goes, right? We can always make adjustments. We've learned how to do this online if, if we had to do that. But uh, I think it's going to be good to be back together uh, and do some of this live. So uh, June 22nd, 6.30 at our East Campus. I'm going to, I mean, I'm just looking forward to seeing everybody and uh, being able to be together again. Uh, so let me pray and we will stop. And Father, we give you praise. And I'm grateful uh, that you, I believe you have always had a plan. Uh, from the, the moment you spoke this world into existence, you have had a plan. Part of that plan has been uh, through your son Jesus and uh, a relationship with us. I believe that is part of your heart as God and creators. You want to be in relationship with your children. And so thank you for that. Uh, forgive us when we just frankly mess that up. Forgive us when we um, just minimize your grace and your love, but uh, I'm so grateful that you continue to extend it. And uh, I do pray as we move into a season of trying to transition back to some normalcy in our lives that uh, just pray for protection, for health, for wisdom, a discernment, and uh, but but really just a spirit of unity that uh, within regeneration, within the body of Hope Fellowship, within our communities, just in this country, that somehow, Holy Spirit, you could move in our lives. Let us be influencers of creating in unity and not division. So I just thank you for Jesus. Pray your blessings on each person that is listening to this tonight and we pray all of this in the name of jesus amen all right june 22nd hope to see you then bye <music>